Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's honeymoon period as Manchester United manager ended abruptly on Tuesday night when PSG smashed Manchester United 2-0 at Old Trafford. It was two, but it could have been more. And questions are being asked. You know, what are the problems at Manchester United? What problems does Solskjaer have at the moment? And what needs to be done to fix it? First things first, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did an absolutely sensational job to get Manchester United back into the top four in such a quick time. Gary Neville said that this Solskjaer job was basically a free run as interim manager. And I agree to a point, but what Solskjaer has done in such a short space of time at Manchester United has been nothing short of phenomenal. As soon as he came in, there was an immediate uplift. Jose Mourinho's gone, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, a club legend, has come in and now he is manager. The fans immediately responded to that. And Solskjaer got the same response from his players. They got the same uplift as Mourinho leaving as fans did. They were happy to be playing for Manchester United again. And Solskjaer gave four of United's best players freedom on the pitch. Jesse Lingard, Anthony Martial, Marcus Rashford and Paul Pogba. He allowed them all to express themselves, allowed them all to play the United way. And he implemented a style of play to get the most out of those players. Really fast, expressive, expansive attacking football that broke quickly and made it impossible for defenders to defend against. And the style was immediately clear. The starting 11 was immediately clear. And after three years of, I don't know what to call it, under Jose Mourinho, we're chopping and changing and not knowing his best team. Solskjaer knew it within the space of six, seven weeks. And all of that put together, United went on a mad surge. 10 wins from 11 games and we headed into PSG. And then PSG happened. And Manchester United, it was a massive reality check for fans. And as optimistic as a lot of United fans were going into the game, you know, with Neymar being out, Cavani being out, and United playing so well, PSG were just too good for Manchester United. Now, as great as Solskjaer has been so far, what he can't do, what he couldn't do, is change and solve all of Manchester United's problems immediately with a magic wand. That is impossible. And the major issue for a lot of United fans was abundantly obvious before the PSG game, but it became horribly exposed by the PSG game. And that's the fact that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has found his starting 11, which is fantastic. But outside of that starting 11, how good is this Manchester United squad? That honeymoon period in those first 11 games under Solskjaer, we saw our starting 11. Martial out wide left, Rashford through the middle, Lingard on the right, and Pogba just behind them. With Herrera and Matic sitting deep. Manchester United knew their team. For, s for so long, we've been so used to change coming in the starting 11 every single week that it sort of blew us all away. And it was fantastic. But as soon as Martial and Lingard went off against PSG, Manchester United changed. Now, that's not because Martial and Lingard are both in the top five players in the world and they're absolutely irreplaceable. It's simply because of the personnel that Manchester United have at their disposal to replace them with. Now, Alexis Sanchez came on and so did Juan Mata. But for me, Sanchez, he's completely done at Manchester United. He has to go in the summer. You know, Sanchez is a supreme athlete. Still not the peak of his game. He was at peak previously, but clearly able to play better than he is playing at the moment or has been ever since he joined Manchester United. It seems more down to an attitude from him rather than anything else whatsoever. Sanchez, for me, now looks comfortable as Manchester United's highest earner. He's got a major contract. He doesn't seem to be asked to play for Man United anymore. Not the level that we want him to. And after the game, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said that there's not really much more I can do for Sanchez. It's all down to him and the individual. But Sanchez coming on didn't offer the same spark as Lingard or Martial. And Man United's attack went away. And the same thing goes for Juan Mata. Juan Mata and Alexis Sanchez, two fantastic footballers who go to other clubs, could still do a wonderful thing. But in this Ole Gunnar Solskjaer system, they're jarring. They're different. Mata is slow and cumbersome, more of a possession-based footballer, not somebody who's used to rapidly counter-attacking. And when you've got all these square pegs in round holes, nothing slots together. And the same thing I feel could be said for Romelu Lukaku, who again, a good striker, maybe a great striker but not in this Manchester United team that Solskjaer is building. He's different. We saw when he played on the right wing against Arsenal that he was better, more effective, but as a number nine, he offers nothing in the same way that Marcus Rashford does, a completely different type of player.
But I wouldn't be surprised if Lukaku was sold in the summer, regardless of whether Solskjaer gets the job or not. I just don't think he suits this United way that we are seeing under Solskjaer. And without Martial and Lingard's movement against PSG, PSG were able to open up. In that first 45 minutes, they tried to contain United. Marquinhos, man Mark Pogba out of the game. In that second half, they were able to express themselves a bit more. Because without Lingard and without Martial, there were no runs in behind happening from Sanchez and Mata. They knew safely that they could go and expand and go attack themselves because our attackers who came on weren't going to offer the same style as Lingard and Martial. And without players of a similar ilk on the bench, Solskjaer wasn't able to use the same game plan. It wasn't working with Mata and Sanchez and he hadn't come up with a plan B. But no manager's going to expect to replace two or th three of his attackers due to injuries, especially before half time. So I don't begrudge Solskjaer for that. And, you know, some of you may say that's the case. You know, Solskjaer should be planning plan B, plan C, plan D, just in case these things happen. But I think Solskjaer's done such an incredible job in turning it around in such a short space of time that he's going to stick to that plan. It's working. Why change it? Why create an alternative? And maybe that's me being naive and Solskjaer being naive, but I understand why it happened. It's just, for me, it massively exposed why, on paper, this United squad would be an incredible team to play on FIFA. Oh, you bring Sanchez on, bring Mata on. But now we can see a clear vision, a clear style is there. And that means that certain players just don't fit in it. Alexis Sanchez could fit in it. It just doesn't look like he wants to. Juan Mata doesn't for me. And I don't think Romelu Lukaku does either. So outside of that starting 11, Manchester United can't play the Solskjaer way. Because the players just don't fit for it. And when you break it down position by position, the weaknesses become even more obvious. And we've talked about them lots and lots and lots. Fullback, Ashley Young shouldn't be playing for United, neither should Antonio Valencia. Central midfield, we saw how good Marco Verratti was. Even a centre-back in Marquinhos was brilliant. They were level above, levels above where United are at the moment in midfield. And if we've got a £52 million midfielder in Fred on the bench who can't even get a sniff in the team and not even in that situation, it goes to show how weak our options in central midfield are. When you take Pogba out of it, when he's not having a good game, Manchester United's midfield invariably does not have a good game. And at centre-back, we all know that Lindelof needs a partner. Who will that be? We've seen, we saw, sorry, how important having someone like Thiago Silva is to your team. He was just a commander, a leader. I didn't know he was still that good. But him and Kimpembe shut United down in the second half. Not that they had to do too much because with Sanchez and Mata on, United's attacking threat was nullified. And as that game against PSG progressed and they scored one and Manchester United, they lost their heads. And that, for me, brings up another major question. You know, when United's back's against the wall, when we're losing one or two nil, we need someone to step up, we need someone to lead. Who is that person? Under Solskjaer, you know, that's happened to United quite a few times. You know, Spurs, we won one nil. It was David De Gea who stepped up, literally with his feet, made 13 saves or so, and he won the points for United. Newcastle 2-0. It's 0-0. Lukaku gets brought on by Solskjaer. His subs changed the game. You got Brighton, 2-0 up. We concede a goal, and then we had a nervous 15 minutes. The defence holds out. And it's happened on another couple of occasions as well. Burnley 2-0 down. The whole team gets pushed forward by Solskjaer. Pogba scores the penalty and Lindelof scores the equaliser. A whole team, real team effort. But PSG, they went 1-0 up. And after that, United's players seemed to lose their head all over the pitch. Midfield, defence, attack. Nobody could hold the ball. Nobody could stop PSG. And a second goal seemed inevitable. And it came. Now, that shouldn't be the case. You know... Going 1-0 down there against PSG, it wasn't like Nani when we played Real Madrid in the Champions League at Old Trafford, when Fergie lost his head. When he, Nani got sent off, the whole crowd was mad. The frustration levels were boiling over. In those situations, you understand that players can lose their heads. But in this situation with PSG, we only went 1-0 down. It's not the end of the fucking world. Yet we all seem to play like headless chickens from that point onwards. Maybe the quality shone through too much at that point and players were like, meh. I'm not going to be able to beat this PSG team, but that's not how United players should ever think, and I don't think it's how they thought. But when it comes to leadership, you saw what PSG had on the pitch. 
Thiago Silva, Angel Di Maria, experience. Danny Alves, little dickhead that he is, experience. Buffon, experience. This United squad massively lacks it. Paul Pogba, on his day, 2-0 against City away. What happens? He scores two, he went 3-2. Incredible. But last night against PSG, Paul Pogba was a little bit reckless. Frustrated because Marquinhos was shutting him out of the game and he wasn't able to lead. Now, we don't have those leaders inside this squad. We haven't had them for some time. And when you play elite level, the top table opposition in PSG, these problems come to the surface. And we saw that, unfortunately, pretty horribly in that second half. Tactically, I don't think Solskjaer got it wrong from the start against PSG. We exploded out, pressed with intensity, and we made PSG nervous. You could see that in the passing they were doing. First 45 minutes were cagey because PSG were shutting United down with Marquinhos and Pogba, and United were getting shut down by PSG. It was a real stalemate. Unfortunately for Solskjaer, those injuries to Marciano Lingard changed it completely. Thomas Tuchel reacted in that second half by letting PSG be more expansive, and United couldn't respond. But PSG, hands up, were just the better team by some margin. Killing Mbappe, wow, what a player he is. But United were outplayed by a much, much better team. But it doesn't mean that it hasn't highlighted and, it, and sort of brought all these problems back to the surface for discussion again. And the solution to solving these problems, I suppose, is quite simple on paper, but confusing in reality. Because United have two options. Number one, stick with Oregon and Solskjaer. Let him resolve the issues that he has identified in this Manchester United squad and build his own United squad in the next couple of years. Or bring in somebody else. Tell Solskjaer it's not going to work out. Bring in Pochettino. Question marks over what that would mean for the squad. No idea. But they are the two options that Manchester United have going into this summer. Stick with Solskjaer or twist with Pochettino or Zidane or anybody else who it's going to be. The problems are clear, clear and obvious in terms of if Manchester United want to become that elite level club again, what we have to sort. And clearly we do want to become that elite level club, otherwise we would have been happy just sitting there getting top four, winning Europa League, winning the FA Cup, winning the League Cup. That's okay for Manchester United, but it's not for the board. It's not okay for Manchester United. We want to be winning the Premier League. We want to be winning the Champions League. And that's why you have to talk about these problems like this. Because Sanchez and Mata, yes, they're great players. Well, they were great players. But not for what we're trying to do at the moment under Solskjaer or whoever comes in next. It's not the United way. And we've got to buck up. Now, at this moment in time, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's favourites take the Manchester United job. And with, what, 10 wins in 12? Who can blame him? It's absolutely right that he's favourite. But everything can change, of course. A few bad results between now and the end of the March, maybe things will change. But one thing that won't change is these problems that exist at United. These hurdles that are in our way and stopping us from catching up with Liverpool and City and PSG and Real Madrid and these elite level clubs in terms of their football right now, United are leap years behind them. Maybe not leap years, maybe I'm being too harsh, but it's clear that if we are serious about solving these problems truly, these issues have to be addressed. Of course, I haven't touched upon the wider issues behind the scenes at the club, the fact that we've got the wrong structure, the fact that we probably need a sporting director in the club. I've more focused on the on the pitch issues that we saw under Solskjaer's United against PSG and how they need to be addressed. But let me know what you think about all the problems at the club and what really needs to change for us to get to that top table, to start eating at that top table again. Because right now, United are not there yet.